So it's your boy Cash Cup Productions. I'm live with Wreck and Ralph. We live in the tone. What's good, bro? Go ahead, talk your shit. What up, y'all? Wreck and Ralph, LDT. You can call me Wrecking. Check out my new single, Living Legends, with Juan Gotti and Lucky Luciano. All right, what's good, bro? How you doing? I'm doing great, bro. Yourself? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Good to hear. All right. So for those who don't know you, just go ahead and introduce yourself. Yeah, I'm Wrecking Ralph, LDT. Been doing this since about 2010. Started off as an audio engineer. Uh, started dropping my own music about 2014. Um, a lot of people probably heard of me, a lot of people probably haven't. Um, I've helped out a lot of people here in the city um, make their own music before I help my own artists. And uh, now we're doing our own thing, so mm -hmm. that's what it is. And you're born and raised in the city? Born and raised in San Antonio, Southside. All right, all right. So go ahead, talk about like uh, when the rap shit started coming out, coming for you. Uh, so like I said, I started as an audio engineer in like 2010. Um, did that for a few years, just really focusing on the sound, getting the right equipment, make sure I get everybody sounding right. Um, really prided myself on my sound. Um, I had some people come in and tell me that they've worked in professional studios before and it never had the sound that they get in my, in my home studio. So uh, as soon as I started getting those kind of compliments and started getting that kind of sound, that's when I was like, okay, now I'm ready to start recording my own music. And um, of course, as most people starts off kind of mediocre, you just kind of do it for fun. And uh, some songs are well received, some songs weren't. And you just keep going from there, you know? Mm -hmm. So you were always aspiring to be involved with music? Yeah, always, uh, not just a rapper, but also in the background scene as well. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, just take us back to when you first started making music. You know, talk about your experience making your first song. My first song uh, was trash, dog. <laughs> so to be completely honest, you know, a lot, a lot of people probably won't be honest like that and, and tell you. Um, but yeah, my first song wasn't that great, you know? Um, it, 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 uh, you, you get the feedback from your friends and the people who are closest to you. Some people are going to tell you it's good. Some people are going to tell you keep going. Some people are going to tell you it's not, you know. Um, I was lucky enough to have a friend uh, named Gbert who sat down with me and he actually was telling me what I was doing wrong. And he sat down and was teaching me like, uh, like basically how to rap for, for lack of better terms. You know what I mean? And uh, as to where other people will let you do whatever the hell you're going to do and let, let you... Uh, that you sound whack or whatever, you know what I mean? He actually sat down with me and was like, hey, bro, this is what you could do to sound better, you know? So to me, um, that's that, that was the experience of my first song and, and my first few songs, you know? Mm -hmm. So fast forward after that, uh, once you started uh, pushing your shit out, uh, what was the feedback like from people around you? Uh, good and bad, good and bad. Um, I had a lot of family and friends telling me it was good, keep going. Um, a couple of family weren't so supportive. Uh, it's it's more of a hobby to them than than a career. Um, but on, on the good side, um, songs like like from my demo WR2K, I got all my albums up on the wall. It's it's, it's a daily motiv motivator. Um, my first my first demo I dropped WR2K had a song uh, called 4 AM, and uh, that that in itself was uh, my best well received song. And it was it was an eight track uh, eight little demo. So. Um, the feedback off that song alone propelled me forward um, along with a couple other songs that I had on there and uh, by the time I had dropped that I was already halfway through my next project so even if anybody was telling me it was whacker to stop but I couldn't because I was already too far invested in it you know what I mean mm -hmm. and you came up uh, you were coming up during like the CD era and shit like that right yes and no like it was already phasing out um, so with the CDs and everything you see them going more at shows, you know what I mean? They're more like mementos than people really like like playing them and listening to them, you know what I mean? If anybody does anything with them, they're popping them into their like laptop or something just to rip the music real quick, you know what I mean? But um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of part of that, that last little dying age where, where people still listen to CDs. Like I give my CDs to my cousins and they don't even know how to open them, <laughs> you know what I mean? So it, it's funny. Mm -hmm. So how many projects you got out right now? I see them on the wall, but... Man, I've got... Don't quote me on it. I have to, I'd have to sit up here and count them. I don't want to count them on camera, but I got at least 10 projects out. Um, demos, mixtapes, albums, all, all together. And um, as I said, I'm an audio engineer first. So for, for the city and, and for the, the artists in the city, I put out over 50 albums and mixtapes for them as well. So if you count that with mine, I have under 60 albums under my belt that I've mixed, mastered, and recorded. Mm -hmm. Can you name some of the people that came and worked with you? Yeah, uh, Mexican Hendrix. I, I did his whole album. Um, uh, Jay Tone was, was somebody you did. Uh, I, I've done a few of his tracks recently. Um, on, a, on a bigger note, I've worked with Mark Gabota. Uh, I've worked with King Kali, uh, Live Ola, uh, Vel the Wonder out of California. I've had uh, a couple of my, my, my good clients and friends bring her in here for me. 
Um, I, I've had a few few big names in here, and if I'm leaving any, anybody out, I, I apologize. Just, I, I've worked with so many people, so it's just it's hard to keep up sometimes. Mm -hmm. What kind of impact did uh, King Kylie and Third Degree have on uh, the era back then? Man, um, it's kind of like an understatement to say that they're, they're San Antonio legends because they really kind of paved the way for a lot of uh, what, what we do now. And, and a lot of the artists you interview and people you talk to, um, we emulate what we do off of what they did. You know what I mean? And uh, even if people say it or they don't say it, anybody that's from here and grew up listening to Third Degree, they're emulating what they did based off of that. You know what I mean? In, in some way or some form, it's imitation is the highest form of flattery. You know what I mean? So everybody's always doing something whether they they acknowledge it or realize it or not you know what i mean mm -hmm. and uh to me that that's what that's what their degree was you know they, they were a big staple in, in the san antonio scene and they, they mean a lot to not just me but a, a lot of people you know what i mean mm -hmm. and your whole time making music and dropping songs and shit like that did you have to like as the years went by did you have to adjust to the sounds that were coming out you know the mainstream sounds or did you just stay in your own lane the whole the whole way there it's funny that you mentioned that because um, for my first few projects, man, I'd say probably like the first four or five projects, I just stay in my lane, do what I do. Um, I wouldn't call it boom bap, even though it leans more to that side. It's kind of an aggressive style, and um, it's just kind of a sound I built on. I worked with one producer out of Chicago for, for many projects first, just kind of trying to develop a sound. And um, to me, man, I think... Um, I think just really developing my own my own sound and really just making my own movement was really what, what I've always just focused on, you know what I mean? And um, just recently, I started working with a new producer, Almari, who's from here, and he's got more industry placements, you know what I mean? He, he works with people, um, I don't want to put names out there because he's actually his homie people he's worked with, the songs aren't released yet, so I don't want to like mess anything up for him, but he's got um, stuff with like Clever and, and Rilo Rodriguez. And uh, people like that. And if you know Raul Rodriguez, he just signed to um, Lil Baby. Clever just signed to um, like Post Malone's record label and a whole bunch of stuff like that. Yeah, so he's actually making moves with people who are actually like at, at a different stature than we are. So um, in order to kind of tailor myself to those beats, I, I am kind of switching things up a little bit. But I'm, I'm still being myself 100. You know what I mean? It's just the flow has changed because I changed. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I've, I've grown.